To create and import a car from SketchUp, then make it look real and actually add in some animation to the wheels to make the car look like it is moving, is very easy to do with the following steps. First, once we download a really cool car from 3D Google Warehouse and we add the model into 3D Exchange, we need to do a few things to make sure the model is what we want it to be like. A good model will be made up of several different components and groupings. For example, the tires will be separate from the group of the chassis, and the chassis will also be made up of components such as the doors, windows, and bumpers. This allows users of the model to better define the model when it is in use. For example, for us iClone users, we will want to have the wheels separate from the car so that we can animate them. If the model is not designed this way, open it up in SketchUp and group the parts together however you want so that you can get the components you need for whatever your project calls for. First thing we want to do is turn off the back faces in order to bring the face count lower so we can maintain real-time control in iClone 3. The lower the face count, the better the performance will be. This is true in movie making, game production, as it is also true for iClone 3. The next thing we would like to do is smooth out the surfaces of the car to make the textures look better inside of iClone 3. So let's select the parts of the car we wish to export. I think three groups will be good. The chassis, the front tires, and the back tires. So let's go ahead and do the chassis. So deselect all the wheels and make sure only the chassis remains. Then let's export it and name it something. Alright, now let's deselect the chassis parts and reselect the front tires. Now we want to do something a little different with the tires. Instead of aligning it to the ground, we need to align them to the center. This is because later we will be adding animation, so we should make sure that they are aligned to the center so the wheels will rotate properly. So let's export them and name them. Then let's do the exact same thing for the back tires. Align them to the center and export them. Alright, so let's start to build our cool car. Let's start first with our tires. But before we throw the tires into the scene, let's create a wheel helper to make our wheels go round and round. So let's add in a torus. Make sure the torus is aligned to the origin. We want to use a torus because it's naturally aligned to the center as opposed to a 3D box, which is aligned to the ground. Since our tires are aligned to the center and the torus is aligned to the center, it will make it easier to animate the rotation of the wheel using a torus since its axis will be the center and not the bottom face. Then let's use a timeline and transform keys to cause the torus to rotate forward. Then move down the timeline to do the same thing and continue to do this until we have caused the Taurus to rotate 360 degrees. Now we should collect the animation by using the collect clip function on our timeline. So highlight the entire animation, then right click on it and choose add to library, and then name it. Then once we have the animation clip saved to the library, let's delete all those other transform keys. Then let's open up the perform track, choose the first key, and right click to add the animation from the library. Now you can see our Taurus will rotate using the animation we created. So we can edit the animation like any other performances, by making its duration faster or slower, or copying and pasting it to make the actual animation last longer. But we want to make this Taurus into a wheel helper, that way we can use it again and again in other projects as well. So let's add this Taurus to our custom prop library and name it. Alright, so let's assemble our car. So we first add in our wheel helper, then we can add in the front tires. Once the front tires are in, we can then attach those front tires to the wheel helper. But we don't want that ugly, whitish, yellowish, whatever colorish that Taurus is, so let's go down to the opacity and change it to zero. And once the Taurus's opacity is now zero, now you can just see the wheels and the wheels maintain the animation of the Taurus. So let's go back up and merge the two so that way it will be easier for us to position those wheels anywhere we want in our scene but keep the animation the same. Now let's add in the chassis, and let's adjust the tires into the right place. So 
So let's now add in some reflection to make our car look better. So let's first select the chassis and add in some reflection. Then let's go to the brake lights and we can add in some glow as well. Make sure you experiment with all kinds of different glow types to get the lights just right because we can increase the strength to also make it a little brighter. Then we can do the same thing to the headlights. But what are headlights without actual light? So let's attach a few spotlights to the front of the car, that way the headlights actually seem to function. And what about the tires? We should add in a little bit of reflection to the rims as well. Finally, I think a red car will be more fun, so let's change the color of the diffuse and the ambient to have a shiny red car. So here's my finished car. We can now add in some scenery as well to change the lighting to make the car look more cool. Press play and notice how my tires are rolling, but oops, that doesn't look right. So let's add in some transform animation to the car so that the car actually seems to be moving. First find a point on the timeline and create a transform key. Then once you create that key, we can then move the car into a different position. Once the car is in position, then we can press play. The car will move from first position to the second position. Now the car looks like it's really driving across the terrain. So this is how we can take a car from SketchUp and make it into a realistic sports car and animate it in iClone 3. 